Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know the game as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Hello coders! Uh, back for part 16. Uh, this time is going to be a little bit different. Um, the, the subject matter isn't that complicated. We're going to put some, uh, some stuff on the screen. Actually, you can see it already, uh, printed there in the code. We're going to print the score, our number of lives and the level. And, uh, that's basically it. So it's a small, but not insignificant thing, but there's something else, um, that I wanted to show because it is becoming uh, increasingly uh, harder to um, figure out exactly which lines of code have changed and which haven't. So um, to do that, I use uh, Git, and I have used Git to do that. And Git, basically, what I do is I copy um, the, uh, the new version of the code over um, the old one and git then tells me what the difference is between the two versions um, and I use a uh, uh, like the the Windows desktop um, git tool and it does it like this so it um, the green stuff is what is added the red stuff is what is deleted since the last one uh, there's the line numbers uh, it's not always straightforward but it helps me to detect the changes now you will see all of the comments that i made the last time uh, are removed in the in the next version of course um, so there's a lot of changes that we won't need to look at but changes like this you know there's a um I'm, I'm way down in the code where we always start in the data section and there's text display. So uh, score, lives, and level. Now, what is good to know is that nowhere in the code or in the data or in the memory or otherwise is uh, the score um, recorded only on screen. So the stuff that you see on screen is the actual memory location where the score is. Also good to note is that the last zero never changes. Now, most of the of the older arcade games, they uh, you know you score points in multiples of ten. So the last digit is just always zero, but it gives you the feeling that you're getting you know you could add two zeros for even uh, a more dramatic effect. But if you look at the old games, the last zero just never changes. Oh, coffee's gone already. Uh, number of lives and level, they are recorded somewhere. Actually, level is an interesting one because level serves as an index into our tables, but we don't want the, uh, the player to start at level zero. We want him to start at level one. Um, and the number of lives is just uh, what it is. So this is uh, basically uh, new. Um, we can look at the, at the code, of course, uh, the way you're used to. That's it. It starts with a space and it ends with an asterisk. That's what we test for. Um, we do not make use of new lines, but we could because the code uh, takes that into consideration. Um, we have player lives here. That is new. So let's have a look at that. Player lives. That is new. Um, then I'll, I'll just keep shoving this in until, you, you know, we you get the picture. Um, the last time we saw that the player was included as an object now, and it is handled as an object, so that's nothing new. Here's a new bit of code. Um, but now we're into code, and, and uh, the, I just wanted to look at the data first so now i'm gonna scroll all the way back up to see what is new in the code um we have uh, a joystick port definition 
Now we were always always using joystick port two, but we we were using the um, uh, the memory value and no label. So we've just made a label out of uh, joystick port two. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna keep uh, shoving that Git tool into the screen. You you get the picture. Um, okay. Uh, when we start the game, there's some stuff that is new there. And uh, this is all at the start of the game. Ba, 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 ba. Here we go. Player lives. The player lives uh, uh, location is started with three. Well, it's very... Uh, so if you wanted to hack this game or make a... a you know, crack it or make like a trainer or whatever, or a cheat. You could, uh, you'd you'd have to find this location and change that, and it it would give you more lives. Um, oh, one of the things um, that that is the next thing. Uh, where it, this is not new, but the uh, the level number we have uh, no more than ninety nine levels in this game so that's two digits that's something to remember as well that's what what, what we're going to program for so we set the level number to zero we have to remember that as we draw it onto the screen we have to add one because you know level zero now um something has changed here where the last time we just uh, printed the um uh, the level number uh, on the top left of the screen, now we have uh, a text display. So we have a text to display. We set the zero pointer to that. Uh, we load the location of where we want that, and we call display text. Now, I want to look at display text again, so I'm going to uh, go to that declaration. By the way, I have installed the latest... Uh, version of a C64 Studio. Just as a, oh, sorry, I opened help. Just as a as a as a as a sidetrack, there I am now uh, at 4.8. Let's see if this works already. No, Georg, I'm going to send you an email about this. When I select text, I <laughs> I'm not selecting the last character. That's a bug. <laughs> I'll. I'll I'll try and let you know. Um, anyway, display text. Uh, not much has changed here. But let's see. I'm going to... Well, let's just go through this again. Um, good to know that the X and Y uh, coordinates are in parameter 1 and 2. So we load the Y uh, coordinate into the X register. <laughs> so X becomes the index into our uh, line offset table. We get the low address. We uh, we put that in pointer 2 and pointer 3. Um, uh, 2 being the, the character memory and 3 being the color memory. Then for the high part, um, we get it from the high table same index uh, because it's the same line and we store it in the high part of the uh, the zero page pointer address we clear the carry that this is where we do that strange addition where we calculate the difference between the screen screen and color memory and we add that difference to the value that we had as the uh, the high address of the character memory we make sure we end the lower part and we shift it right so that we get it into the lower part and we store it there. This is kind of a still not sure. I mean, I get why you would do this uh, because now you can change the location of the screen color memory and you don't have to change all the code, but chances are that you're not going to do that and this could have been a fixed value anyway. There may be some other magical reason why you would do this. If you, I mean, this is all uh, this is all done by the assembler. Uh, if you looked at the code, this would just be a fixed value. There's no calculation going on there. Um, anyway, we set up the uh, the pointer addresses. Um, 
then we uh, uh, we load. Uh, what, what we want to do is uh, because now this points to the start of the line. Um, we take the low part of the address. We add the the parameter one, which was the x coordinate. So we're we're walking along the the line so we store that there then we load the high part we add zero but with carry so if we added something here that ch uh, caused an overflow then we're pushing that overflow into the other part of the address the high part and we do the same for the color memory uh, and then what we do is we set the index to zero we load the text you know, one character of the text. Uh, we compare it with the end marker. This is still um, a fixed value, but that that may become a label later. If the end marker is reached, then we're done. If we're not, we check for a line break. You know, a bit of this is like hex, and this is decimal. That's probably the way he has it in his in his head. Check for a line break. If there's a line break, we do this. If there's not, then we just store whatever we had here onto the screen location um, plus Y and we make it white. We load color one, again, one fixed value. You could make a label called white and uh, we store that in the color memory, same location. We increase Y and we go in the same. If, if there's a line break, what we do is uh, again, we advance one character uh, and what we do here is we change the starting location of the um, uh, of the text pointer, right? Uh, we've covered that. We, uh, um, yeah. So uh, it, uh, so that the the next. Um, we skip over the 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 new line character, so uh, we're point we're making the zero page pointer point to the first character of the new line, and then we increase parameter two, which was the y coordinate with by two. So we we actually create a an empty line, and then the next line, and we jump to display text again, and we do the whole thing as if uh, it, there was never a new line. Anyway, it's just a trick to do a line break. Done that. Okay. Um, I'm going back to the top. I'm jumping there all in one go. Display text. That's where we were. Uh, display level number. Let's uh, go to that declaration. I'm jumping there. So what we do is we load the level number. Of course, before every ad on the Commodore 64, um, we have to clear the carry because there is no addition without carry. So we have to clear it. Then we add one um, because level number was uh, zero. So we have to add one. And then we divide by 10. I'm going to go back to that. So uh, I'm going to come back to that. But the, the, the accumulator now holds the, uh, the, um, like the second digit of our two-digit level number. Um I think actually the the yeah well we've divided that by ten we push the accumulator then we transfer y to a so y probably has the value that we're looking for so if we're on level uh, twenty five uh the accumulator will hold, or, or I think the Y register will hold two now. So we transfer that to A. We clear the carry. We add 48 because we have to, if we have a number and we add 48, this is um, to, to match it with the, 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 the number character in the Petsky table. 48 is just a fixed number that you have to add. And we store that in in a in a fixed location now this is odd because the score was just printed on a variable location 
right? Remember that we that we said uh, we gave it an x and a y a coordinate. Now we're placing it in a fixed location, so this is definitely going to change at some point. Um, on the other hand, you know, we're the only ones programming this code, so we might as well leave it like this. Uh, 23 lines times 40 characters plus th 37, because that's apparently where the where the where the character goes. And then we'll pull uh, the A, uh, pull like the the least significant digit off the stack. We clear the carry, add 48, and store that on the screen. Now, let's look at this divide by 10. I think it's below here. Now I'm just gonna jump to the declaration here. Divide by ten. Now this is this is funny. Uh, we're going to subtract, so we set the carry. That's what you have to do when you uh, subtract. Uh, we load y with as maximum value. Then we increase it. So at the first iteration of the loop, it is zero. Now, right, it divides the accumulator by ten. So uh, the accumulator holds the level number. And we subtract 10. And as long as the carry is set, we keep subtracting 10. Oh, let's see. We, we keep subtracting 10. Right. Uh, so if we have, le uh, if, if, we, if we're on level 25, we can subtract. 10 twice so our answer would be 2 um, and as soon as we subtract and there's nothing and the number is too small the carry will be cleared uh, but we will have subtracted 10 once too often so we have to add 10 again but our y counter increase y will hold the number of times we successfully subtracted 10, which is 2 in the case of 25. And we want the remainder to be correct as well, which is why we add the last 10 and then we return. So basically this, re this routine just tries to subtract 10 as often as it can until it fails and then uh, uh, the result of the number of times 10 was subtracted uh, is in y. So this is kind of a sneaky way of dividing by 10. <laughs> it works as long as your uh, number doesn't uh, grow beyond uh, uh, two digits. So that's how that works. I'm going to go back to the game loop, so to the beginning of the game. Scroll down, not uh, scroll up. Display level number, so I'm going to go to that. That's where we were. So we have the level number. We have to divide by 10 because we have to print each digit separately. Now, there is a way uh, of doing this with binary coded decimals, but then you would have to store... Well, you would have to switch... Uh, the CPU to binary coded decimal mode. Now that is not used at all. In binary coded decimals, um, uh, six of the 16 hexadecimal numbers aren't used so that a value in a, in a byte or, or even a half a byte uh, represents uh, a decimal number. Binary coded decimals um, are you know, well used in, in business applications because uh, we work in a decimal system and it's just a way of working with decimal numbers and especially for scores, it would be good. But apparently, uh, Georg didn't uh, choose to use uh, the binary coded decimal mode so, because the, the 6510 and the 6502 both have a binary coded decimal mode. But it's not used, so I'm not going to talk about that much longer. I'm going to look at the code um, some more and see if there's anything. Yeah, when we go to the next level, I'm going to find that. 
label go to next I'm typing here level uh, find next that's the one right of course this is now added to display level number um as a as an aside, I, I'm I'm following um, uh, the development loosely of uh, Hyperion. Hyperion or is it Empyrean? I think it's called Empyrean. <laughs> it's a new game uh, by Georg, which is uh, uh, much more complicated than than this one, uh, and it has bullets. And I asked him, how do you do the bullets? Well, bullets are just characters shooting over the screen, which is nice. But then there is scrolling. There's horizontal scrolling, which doesn't make uh, it impossible to do bullets. But the vertical scrolling, if, if, if you shoot and you, you scroll the screen vertically, uh, it's, uh, that causes some logical problems. How do you solve that? Um, I don't know why I thought of that, uh, but this is, oh yeah, I, I thought of that because of the, the, the buffer. We now have a buffer as well because we're placing items on the screen and an item literally overwrites what is on the screen. But when we walk over an item, we have to test the ground that is under the item because we do not expect the player to really walk on the item as if it were there. It has to be like a, like a floating thing that you can walk through or over, uh, but you have to test uh, in the code whether there is you know, ground that you're walking on, yes or no. So that's why we have the buffer. That's why I thought of that. Um, now, okay, there's a change here that... I think that's in check collisions. I'm going to see if I can find that code. Check collisions. Probably not. I w wish there was an easier way to f find. If this was just um, sorted, can I sort it maybe? Uh, there's no way of sorting this list. Uh, I'm going to have to find it then. I'm going to go check Collisions. Is this it? Mm, I don't want to scroll too much to the text. Three, five, three. Oh, right. Well, this has changed the uh, the line number where this text is displayed is changed. That doesn't mean much. Display live number. All right, display live number. So that's, oh, let's look at that. I don't think we've seen that yet. Display live number. So we get the player lives. Oh, <laughs> even this, uh, you, can, you can get more than 10 lives apparently. So uh, that's funny because we, we, we've given the player three. There is no mechanic to give the player more lives as of yet, but we are uh, looking at uh, um, uh, the code that takes into account more than 10 lives. It's funny, though, because this code is exactly the same as the other code, like this display level number. Oh, there it is. What a waste. Come on. I'm sure there's a way of... Oh, there's a different location. <laughs> See? There's a different fixed location. <laughs> this is very dirty coding. I mean, if you're, if you're fighting for bytes to put the code in, then this is something that you would never do. But apparently at this point, we don't care yet about how much room the code takes. <laughs> there's an increase score. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, there's an increased score around 
line 600. I'm just going to scroll up there. There we are. Okay. Oh, okay. We remove an item and apply effect. I can remember the last time that there was no effect. So we... Okay. The active item is uh, removed. The score is increased here by 3, which translates to 30 because we have uh, a 0. Let's, let's look at this increased score, but that's uh, interesting as well. Increases score by A, not that the score is only shown. Oh, note that the score is only shown, not held in a variable. That's what I said. So we store the score in parameter 1. X and Y are stored in parameter 2 and 3. I, I can only... Uh, this is... It's unclear to me now. If I was debugging this code, I wouldn't know what X and Y are were at this moment. So what I'd have to do is look at the code uh, to see uh, where it's called and what the values of X and Y were. So, uh, or I have to try and derive it from uh, anyway. Where oh, you know what's happening? He's storing that, and I'll bet you at the end of the function, right? It just uh, restores. So whatever it is, it leaves X and Y alone, but it changes A. So it increases the score. So what we do is, see, this is another way of making your procedures safe. Um, I feel that there is a, a good um, option to actually... Um, create some bytes here inside the function where before you call the function you store the values in there so that the variables become local and you can change them there it's well then returning values would be a different trick but that is some some functions uh, use the stack but uh, to, you know, to, to pass variables to uh, subroutines, but that is tricky because there's al also an address on the stack that you want to leave alone. Um, if that goes wrong, you can hunt bugs forever. Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, we load X by 4. Increase. Uh, this is the position, I think, of the... of the... Um, of the score, we increase the value. Okay, so four is apparently the fourth digit counting from the left. Then we load that character, we compare it to 58, which is probably nine. And if it's not that, then we increase by one is done. We decrease parameter 1. If it's not 0, and then we... Uh, so this loop... So if we increase our score by a number, it does that in a loop. So 1, 2, 3. It does, and, and this thing increases the score by 1, and you do that uh, parameter 1 times. See that? Um... If the character doesn't overflow, branch not equal, then we're done. We'll do the next one. Doesn't overflow, a looped digit. Increase next. 48, we put a... I think that's a zero in that location. We decrease X, so we go one position to the left. And then we go to increase digit. Oh, that's this one. This might overflow. Decreasing X. Yeah. If the score becomes too high. This is what we do, right? We we um, we increase the the least significant uh, digit first. And then we compare whether it's uh, 
you know, if, if you uh, increase the digit, if it's nine and you increase it again, it becomes zero. So, um, you compare it to, let's, I have to look at the Petsky table. Let's uh, find the Petsky table. Petsky table. Um, I think we might be able to use this one. Right, it's very small. I can read it. Five eight. Okay, that's the that's the one after nine. So if if we increase this digit and it's become like uh, it's it's a colon, um, then um, if it's if it's not a colon, then we're done. If it is, we have to write for eight which is zero so we put a zero so it's looped that digit we have to decrease x so that we start increasing the next digit um but have we done that yes well we're going to increase digit so we do that and if we do that too often um then because if you know if the score is nine 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 uh, uh there'll be a problem but we've chosen to not handle that situation here so this this might crash there are other if, if you run this code there's going to be uh things you know you, you, you immediately run into problems if, if you go from one level to the next we'll have a little play in a minute if i can uh, find a controller uh enemy hit let's we can uh, do that i'm gonna have to find it and me hit right increases the score by one which uh the player perceives as 10 increase score actually does that on the screen um, enemy killed. Oh, for enemy, for each enemy hit, you get one, you get 10 points. And when you kill the enemy, you get five points. So we'll, we'll be able to, to see that in a minute. And I think that, yep. We've seen the increased score function. We've seen the display level number, the live number, the divide. Yep. Okay. We've seen all the changes uh, there are. Let me connect the controller, which is not always the case. Controller connected. Let's see what this does. Let's uh, build and run. There we have our game again. Try and make it a little bit larger. Well, you can see score zero 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 lives three level one. If I'm if I'm going to uh, oh sorry I have to set up apparently settings. Uh, dee 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 dee. Joystick settings, is that it? Hey, it is connected. Oh, right, I was uh, using the wrong... Uh, uh, if I shoot this enemy, poof, see? I've just gained 10 points. 20. I shot under him, that doesn't work. 30. 40. He's dead, and I got one point for, uh, or 10 points for hitting him, which made 50, and then 50 points for killing him. I pick up an item, poof, I get 30 points. See, I already have 130 points. Isn't that amazing? Jump. I jumped. Now, this is going to be tricky because these enemies are pretty fast. One, two, three, 
four. I'm, oh, I'm hitting. I'm hitting. <laughs> yes. Oh, I oh I changed level. Did you see that? I can't. Oh, I can't. I can remember that. This is the the, the next level. All ah, right. Three hundred and thirty points. Did I get points for for finishing the level? One, two. You can actually see if I shoot the other way, I don't hit. Shoot that way, I do hit. Poof. Level one. Oh, this is actually improved. See that? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, right. This was the problem. The items are, aren't cleared. So these are all the items in the previous screen and they are still there. And this, this demonstrates very well that because the item here is made up of characters that I would normally fall through, but we're checking the, the backup copy, which doesn't have the items. It has the ground. So, but these items are unpickupable. Oh, and now I am fried. Okay, well, uh, as you see, it works. We have a score, we have lives, and we have a level. Almost a real game. Um, thanks for sticking with the show. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, uh, we've had the summer stop, so I'll probably be doing this on Fridays because that's normally the day that I, uh, that I make new episodes. So this was uh, this was it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.